Today, I will attempt what has never been achieved throughout history. I will decode MENA. I will decode the Middle East and North Africa. And, and, and please, by the way, don't try this at all. But before I do, <clears throat> we need to go through a few facts about the region. A region that has experienced the highest rate of population growth of any region in the world over the past century. A region that has doubled in the past 33 years. And a region that is expected to grow another 46% in the next six to seven years to reach 569 million inhabitants. It's a region that is becoming more and more educated. A region where secondary education enrollment has doubled since the 1990s and tertiary uh, education enrollment has increased by threefold since the 1980s. It's a region that's characterized by rapid and, uh, urbanization and huge expansions of uh, the major key cities in our region. 72% of people in MENA live in urban areas today. A region that has experienced declining fertility rates, yet one that is still growing, but only driven by its aging inhabitants. If we look at fertility rates in the 1960s, it was 6.2 children per woman. Today, that number is 2.6. And my colleague, Darrell Bricker, the next uh, uh, third speaker, will, 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 have a, uh, will address this issue in more detail. It's also a region where life expectancy has increased from 50 years old in 1960 to 75, which is what it is today. It's also a region that will influence, that will witness the rising influence of women who will shape, who will play a crucial role in shaping the future of our region. Gender disparity in the workforce will vanish. And our region will face the social impact of women entering the workforce. Today, currently, one in five females participate and are part of the regional workforce. Yet, if we look at university students, the majority of university students in our region today are females. Graduates who will be entering the workforce and changing the dynamics. And even though the majority of women in the region don't generate income, actually seven in 10 depend on receiving allowance as a primary source of income, 92% of females, heads of households, are the primary decision makers when it comes to brand selection. But we can't really talk about uh, the transformation that's happening in our region without talking about the youth in our region. MENA is one of the youngest regions in the world. Those below the age of 30 represent 57% of our region. Close to a quarter of MENA's population are millennials. 100 million millennials in our region that are setting the future trends of MENA. And they're becoming more culturally diverse. One in two consider themselves as global citizens. Global citizens that are connected and informed consumers. But at the same time, these millennials are struggling. It's a struggling generation. Three in 10 are unemployed. 41% are overwhelmed by financial burdens. And thus, they're skilled at deal seeking. 64% always look for the best offers and deals. 
available. So we have a generation that's financially burdened, that are connected, that are deal seeking, and what we have is the birth of the super searchers, the super search generation. And mean as millennials tend to be experiential uh, and willing to explore new brands. Actually, 54% are moving away from heritage brands that they grew up with in their parents' homes. Two in five are likely to try new things. And yet, a word of caution to everyone in this room, this is a generation that is not willing to give a company a second chance if they have a bad experience. 63% are not willing to do that. And all this is happening amidst a digital revolution. Internet growth has dramatically accelerated in the last five years, reaching 81% uh, last year in 2018, uh, from 52% just five years ago, driven by GCC growth. And also driven by an increase in smartphone penetration. Smartphone penetration in our region has increased threefold over the past decade, from 27% in 2007 to 89% in 2018. And thus, social media is also playing a more pivotal role in people's lives. Nine in 10 internet users in MENA are on social media. And this has led to increased levels of brand engagement. 47% follow brands on social media. Seven in 10 get their information from online sources. And around 50% make purchases based on social media reviews. And basically this has transformed the online space from a source of information to a channel of purchase. Today, 30% of MENA adults have done some form of e-commerce, a threefold increase since 2015. But this increase, with this uh, very high increase over the, the last few years, we need to keep in mind that the e-commerce in MENA is still in its infancy stage and is expected to grow rapidly. Actually, 2018 uh, figures put uh, e-commerce at 27 billion US dollars for our region. Predictions project this figure to grow to, to double by 2022, just in four years, to 50 million. We have seen more uh, aggressive uh, estimates, like from the Arab Federation of E-commerce, that put this figure at 200 billion by 2022. E-commerce has been driven so far by consumers in the GCC. 40% of GCC uh, have conducted e-commerce, and this is where the purchasing power is in our MENA region, followed by the Levant, 19%, and North Africa, 16%. We have to keep in mind that North Africa is where the large populations are. So even smaller growth in North Africa will have huge impacts on the volume of e-commerce that we will uh, have in our region. And this is all facilitated by growth of cash on delivery and digital payments, which are taking larger shares of the total transactions that are happening online. This will also be supported by consumers who are willing to adopt non-traditional payment methods and through uh, non-traditional payment providers. It be mobile service providers, it be mobile tech companies, or digital payment providers. So the game has changed. And I think if there are four topics that have to be on every conference table, in every boardroom, in every business that operates in MENA on a regional level, there are four. Population, women, millennials, and digital first strategy. Population, we're talking about a more urbanized and aging population with a smaller household size and a much more educated and informed consumer base. 
women, their growing influence in society, much higher future levels of involvement in the labor force and the implications of that on lifestyle, consumption and behavior. And they are the ultimate decision maker when it comes to brand selection. Millennials, the largest segment, and the disruptive deal-seeking super searchers, and digital first strategy, looking, from, looking at from shopping to financing, managing the e-commerce boom, and the implications on our business models and distribution networks. You know, they say that uh, the most adaptive creature in the world is the frog. The problem is the frog adapts quite slowly. And so if you put a frog in cold water and heat it, it is so efficient at adapting to the point that it will die boiled. My advice to everyone here, adapting is not sufficient anymore. We need to jump into the future. Thank you.